Spring is almost here. Take that first step to learn, progress, or grow as a creator, artist, or business person. And if you're within the first 300 people who signs up with my link below, you'll get two months for just 99 cents. Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make a requested prop. It's Star-Lord's helmet from Guardians of the Galaxy. I recently got my head cast by Alan Carnes from GoToEffects.com. Now, there'll be a full video about that later, but right now I'm going to use this for making a pattern from my helmet so I know it'll fit. I tape a piece of foam core over the face because Star-Lord's helmet is kind of flat on the face, and then I cover the whole head with aluminum foil and wrap it with duct tape. I can just draw on the basic shapes of the helmet and cut them out from different thicknesses of foam. And the pen marks can just wipe off with rubbing alcohol so I can easily erase mistakes and try again. Once I have a pattern drawn out on one side of the head, I carefully cut off the duct tape pattern and cut it apart along the different panel lines that the helmet will have. And I trace the pieces onto some poster board, marking which ones need to be cut twice, once for each side, and mirroring the ones that'll be for the face and the back of the head. Now chances are that I've made a mistake, but I can always adjust the foam pieces and make a new pattern if I need to. I trace out all the parts on the two different thicknesses of EVA foam. Some go on a 10 millimeter floor mat and some are just on five millimeter craft foam. And I mark which ones belong on the left side and which ones go on the right because the pieces are gonna get mixed up and I know I'll forget if I don't mark them. Now the eyes of the mask are a little tricky. I need to make sure I can center the eyes so that they're not crooked. And to cut the eye holes easily, I sharpen the edge of a copper pipe coupler and use it like a cookie cutter on the foam. And I'll need to make a brow piece. I lay out the pieces in the table to make sure that I have them all. I use a heat gun to form the flat foam into rounded shapes on a planishing stake that I made from a punch ladle. Preforming them like this makes it a lot easier to glue together and makes a much nicer finished shape. And then I can start sanding the edges of the thicker stuff. Because no edges on Star-Lord's mask are actually sharp angles, they are all rounded off at least a little bit. I sand some with a Dremel, and on the bigger pieces, I can use my belt sander. I cut two sets of the ear pieces. It's going to be the thickest part of the mask, and I hollow out one of them so I'll have a place for my own ears to sit. I start to glue the ear pieces together with contact cement, which you just paint on. But wet contact cement doesn't stick. You need to let it almost dry, because dried contact cement will stick together like paper stickers. I sand all the edges on the ear pieces, and then I add some trim that I cut from two millimeter foam. Now it seems like there's an awful lot of sanding and shaping, but for most of the parts in the helmet, this is all I need because it just gets painted. When I glue all the foam pieces together, I'm just gluing them together on the edges, keeping all the insides flat against my head, and shaping the parts as I go. Now I won't know if the size is right until it wraps all the way around, and I know that I can adjust it later if I need to. <laughs> it's Lobot. <laughs> so my thought is, I'm gonna have to have a little bit of an opening in the back here, a little bit of give so I can actually slip the whole thing over my head, but then I want it to be able to easily close. And what I'm hoping is, between the flexibility of just the foam itself, and maybe a few pieces of elastic that'll actually just hold it shut, I can just slip it on like a tennis shoe over my head. Once the eyes are glued on and I add the forehead piece, I can easily see many ways to customize different sci-fi helmets using the same pattern. And now I can try it on. And it feels like it might be too big, but I'm gonna finish assembling the face before making any changes. Now the first brow piece that I cut was too small to wrap over another layer of five millimeter foam. So I adjust my pattern, elongating the brow in the middle and cut out a new piece that fits. I use a Dremel to shape the brow edges and start to paint on some contact cement. This actually fits around the head really good, which is nice, that fits there. This is as bulky here, so this piece is too big. I tape the top of the helmet together to see what I need to trim. So I cut out the first back piece and make a new set that's smaller. And then I cut a dart out of the back of the helmet to reduce its size and then glue all the new pieces on. Oh yeah, that's so much better. <laughs> oh yeah. To make the eye pieces, I'll cut a piece of plastic sink drain pipe that's the same size as the copper pipe coupler. I cut the pipe on my bandsaw and I cut it on a slight angle. 
That way I can help reduce the wall-eyed pug look that I might get if I just cut the pipe straight. I sand the plastic pipe and then glue on some 3 mm foam to bulk it up. Then I can carefully use the Dremel again to grind down the edges of the eyepieces and make them into little cones, and then I can super glue them onto the mask. The mouthpiece looks like it's raised a little bit, so I cut a new layer from 5 mm foam and trim it to shape. Now there's a complicated grill work pattern that's on the mouthpiece. So I measure the size and make a single template for the repeated wavy lines that will score into the foam with an X-Acto knife. The lowest point of each wave is going to be equal to the flat middle part of the next one, and there's going to be five sets of grill work total. Once they're all cut in, I can use a heat gun to slightly shrink the EVA foam and it'll open up all the lines. Now this heat gun I have set to 850 degrees Fahrenheit, and I don't think a hairdryer gets hot enough for this. I cut wedges out from the back side of the foam so I can breathe through the grill work and I use the heat gun on the back side to open up the new cuts even a little more. I also cut panel lines around the eyes, forehead, and ears, opening up each set with the heat gun. I cut two long holes to allow air to get through the mouthpiece, and then I can glue the grill onto the helmet. Next I'll start the little tanks that hang off the front of the face. To keep it lightweight, I'm going to use the plastic sleeve that you'd put over a fluorescent light bulb to keep them from shattering when they're overhead. I carefully cut the tubes to make the tanks, and then I can use them like cookie cutters to make foam plugs that'll fit. Now there's a smaller section on these tanks, so I'm going to use some half-inch PVC pipe because that's going to work great. I cut holes on one side of the big tank plugs so the PVC can glue inside of that easily, and then I can add more plugs into the back of the PVC to make it all look solid. I cut some 5mm foam for the tabs that are on the top of the tanks and score panel lines into them. There's a series of lines that flow through the lower panels and on the back of the head. At first, I thought about cutting out layers of 1mm or 2mm foam and gluing them on, but instead, I'm just going to score lines and open them up with a heat gun. I glue water bottle caps onto the front of each of the tanks. Then I can sand the clear plastic so paint will stick better, and I can spray the tanks with gray primer. I temporarily glue the tanks in place so I can shape all the tubing that connects everything. And to make all this tubing, I'm going to use some drip line sprinkler risers. Now these are just a dollar each, and the tubing is stiffer than regular drip line, and the tubes can cut easily with wire cutters. I make a hole for the tubes to fit in the tanks, so I can glue them in later, and then evenly heat places on the sprinkler tubes so I can bend them into shape, starting at the tanks and working back to the ears. To help get that last 90 degree bend, I bend the heated tube into a 1-2-3 block that I bought from Amazon. Now these are made from machine milling, but they are inexpensive and they're made with straight sides and have all these lovely holes that I can use for bending. Now you don't have to buy these blocks, you can always just drill a hole into a piece of wood. There are three little bent pipe loops on each cheek. I make the six parts from a sprinkler tube, bending them with a consistent shape using the 1-2-3 blocks. To add panels and details to each pipe, I cut strips of self-adhesive craft foam and wrap sections onto the pipes. Now the foam will likely peel up a little bit later, I can always super glue down whatever doesn't stay stuck. Now there's a really cool texture on each of the three little cheek pipes, and I slip a piece of expandable sleeving over each one and I keep it in place with more self-adhesive foam. I make the chin detail out of a piece of floor mat, sanding the edges to make it all beveled and I cut holes for the sprinkler pipes to fit, and then I add a circle panel on the front with the edge of a Sharpie pen cap. I glue it in place, and then bend the tubes from the tanks to the chin. And this time, I'm gonna hot glue some wire into the tubes because of the added water bottle caps on the ends of the tanks, and if I run a wire through the caps into the foam behind them, it'll be a very secure way to attach the tubes. There are two more tiny tubes that run from the cheeks to the bottom of the mouth grill. And I'm using some electrical wire for these tubes, bending them to shape and bending the ends of the wire so I can glue them into the face. I wrap some tape around where these tubes start at the cheeks because that point's thicker. So most of these hard plastic parts, so the, the, all the piping and the, the extra bits and the wires, I'm not going to glue those on yet. I'm actually going to take them all off and spray paint them separately. And I'm going to plastic dip the rest of the helmet. Then I can paint it. Here's the first round of spray paint. I will paint the cheek tubes by hand because I don't want the expandable sleeving to clog up with spray paint. 
The Plasti Dip helps to seal the EVA foam and also allows spray paint to stick better. After I Plasti Dip the entire helmet, I went back and sprayed it down with an automotive spray paint because it had a pretty good gunmetal color. Now the actual prop is a little bluer than this, but I couldn't find the paint easily in a couple of auto stores, so I just picked up this color instead. It's uh, what, gunmetal? Yeah, gunmetal, fine. I'll finish all the rest of the painting with acrylic craft paints. I mix up a color of antique gold and paint on all the parts of the helmet that need to be that gold. Now I did this with three or four light coats of paint because I didn't want to do one lumpy coat of paint. Once the gold is dry, I glue on the cheek tubes and then I paint on some bright silver highlights over the mouth and I add little square panels behind the cheek tubes. Later on, I took a Sharpie and added a small dot on each of the panels. While the silver on the helmet dries, I water down some black paint and just do a black wash over all the spray painted silver pieces. The effect is very subtle, but it looks good. And once the silver acrylic is dry, I can black wash the whole helmet, allowing the paint to settle into the cracks and adding additional layers to slightly weather the helmet. After the black wash dries, I want to mount the tanks. So I poke a couple of holes and super glue them on with real little screws. I can use super glue to add the tubes to the chin and the long tubes that go back to the ears and the tiny tubes that fit on the face. Now, the screws that I used to hold these tanks on, they did poke through in the mask. I'm gonna take a small bit of foam and cover them up just to make it totally safe. Staller's lenses are red and thankfully, Valentine's Day happened not long ago, so I was able to get some lenses really cheap at the dollar store. I pop the heart lenses out and mark the size that I need with the same sharpened copper coupler. The lenses cut easily with scissors and I can fit them in behind the sink pipe in the eyes. There's one more layer to the lenses that I wanna do. Now, I, I, I could put lights in it, I could make them light up, and I'm not gonna do that because I challenged myself to get this done in 24 hours. And if I don't put lights in it, I'll actually make that goal, which is pretty cool. But if you look, he does have a grid that's behind the lenses. And so to easily make a grid without trying to scratch it into the lenses, I'm gonna glue a bit of window screen behind them. After I glue the screen in place, I put Gorilla Tape over all the edges because I don't want to get scratched by wire screen. A quick coat of clear gloss sealer and I'm done with my helmet. All the parts that I used to make this prop, I picked up locally, and I put a part list in the description. And here is my completed Star-Lord helmet, plus this fantastic costume that I got from Cosplay Sky. I mean, Cosplay Sky is a really professional outfit. They called me up, got my sizes, which are not small, and had my costume sent out to me in record time. Thank you guys, this is great. I got gloves, I have a full trench coat, and it's lined. I've got lined pants with a custom belt. Oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> now, I also wanna thank Skillshare. Like I said at the start of the video, spring is nearly here, and now is a great time to learn a new skill or advance yourself even more. Skillshare is a big supporter for my channel, and they have over 17,000 courses. And the first 300 people to sign up are gonna get just two months for 99 cents. Now one of the courses that I've been following along with is Premier Pro Lamatri, color correct like a pro. I think that Jordy's course is very informative and I'm looking forward to using my new skills in future videos. Skillshare has thousands of courses and they're all designed to help you learn a new skill and to grow. Now whether it's gonna be a side hustle or a business venture, or even if you're gonna start out your own YouTube channel, these are great classes and they'll help give you a perfect head start. Remember, you can start learning for just 99 cents and that's gonna be for two months. And then after that, it's just $10 a month. And this promotion is only available for the first 300 people. So make sure to click the link below and snap it up. Once again, thank you Cosplay Sky. This is how Cosplay Sky makes. And this is how Odin makes. I want to thank all of my Patreon subscribers. 
And if you like this video, you can buy me a coffee. And if you like what I do, you can support my channel on my Patreon page. If you have ideas for something for me to make, please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. Now, if you were really careful, you take the lenses from a pair of the 3D glasses from the movie theater, and then you'd have one kick-ass 3D glasses helmet you could wear to Avengers Infinity War.